Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to It's Gorgomatic. This would be your NFL Divisional Playoff Edition. I'm Tim McNiff. There's Kevin Gorgon. Here she is, a resident rookie of the year, Minnesota <laughs> State Senator <laughs> Carla Bigham. Welcome great, to you both. Great to see you both. Got us laughing already, Timmy. What a host. So you good. Know, well, you guys have me laughing because we're talking before we went on, and you guys are like, Last week's games were just not good. And I'm just like, what? You know? I literally was cleaning my floors during the Bucks Eagles game. My husband's like, what is the matter with you, honey? Are you nervous or something? I'm like, no, nah, this is boring. I'm going to I'm going to start Twitter sweeping. I don't know. Yeah. And you didn't watch the Ram game to me. I, I got to be honest. That was the biggest letdown of them all. I yeah. thought that game was just awful. Yeah. Um, you know, this traditionally is the best weekend of football every year. You yeah. get, these semifinal games, so much at stake, trying to get to that uh, NFC and AFC championship game. You've usually got the right teams uh, hosting, the right teams playing each other. And just looking at these matchups, I, I don't see a dog on the card. I think they all have the potential to be tight in the fourth quarter. We might get some overtime, uh, some late game heroics. So, yeah, this this should be a fantastic uh, couple days of NFL football. We touched on this, you and I, and, and the senator, I know, saw the show. But, yeah, Monday night, my wife and I were, were big, and as are you guys, big movie people. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to make sure we see different things and different performances. And I just want you guys to, to see The Lost Daughter, just so you can tell me what it is that I just watched and what I missed. Okay. Because, <laughs> All right, we'll write it down. The it's Lost just, Daughter. Yeah, it's got Olivia Coleman. She's in that series I've encouraged you to watch from The Crown. And, yep. and um She's she's an Oscar winner uh, too for playing uh, a past Queen of England, but uh, she she's yeah this Phenomenal. woman on vacation and her past comes up and she goes kind of on a spiral, and I'm kind of like and it keeps you riveted and all this stuff, but then things happen near the end and I'm like, wait a minute, what you know? So yeah, so I and it's getting all sorts of awards. You know, if you look at really? you know, it's IMDb, all sorts of you know play at different film festivals and Maggie Gyllenhaal directed it. She's getting uh talk. So I believe she's going to get a nomination for director mm -hmm. Coleman and the one who plays the younger version of herself. I think they're both going to get nominations for best actor and uh, actress and supporting actress. So that's what I was doing. And I record the games and I do go back and I watch, you know, it is, I'm just yeah, buzzing right. through. Did they score? Did they score? Did, oh, that's a score. Or that's a big play. So, yeah. So I apologize. I didn't, uh, I wasn't authentic in my, in my actual. <laughs> I'm, I'm not moving from my couch this weekend. That's all I'm Saturday, Sunday. Two we're on not. Saturday, two on We're down to eight, eight teams, four games. Yep. To me, this is, a, it's just like a hollow feeling that comes along with this. I mean, as a yeah. kid, when you get to this time of the year, especially the Vikings weren't involved, it was like. Yeah. It's, yep. The end is near. That's the tricky part. You know, it's exciting. The games are huge, but. You know, as a football fan, you know that okay, you've got this weekend, you got the championship games the following week, and then you got the two week gap and the Super Bowl. It's like, man, um, we love football, and so when it's over, it's it's certainly uh, it's kind of a sad time, no doubt about it. I think for Vikings fans, though, the one thing that'll keep us like is because we are going to have a new coach, we're going to have a new GM, we're going to have a new front office, we're going to go into the drafts, we're going to see what happens with Cousins. I mean, we just have a lot of there is uh, a the, lot of the, meat on that bone, yeah. no and doubt. And so, so the it'll it'll keep us uh, it'll keep us intrigued in uh, a quarterback carousel that I think is going to happen throughout the NFL. Um, but we'll see. I mean, that's what I was just telling my husband that like it's just like they just when you think like. You want to give up hope on this team, then something happens like this, and you're like, "Ooh, now next season, let's go!" Can't Shiny wait. Shiny new toy. Here we yep. go. Yep. It's the Vikings. I mean, <laughs> yeah. fifty plus years of this. <laughs> somebody was putting on. Somebody put on Twitter yesterday. Name your favorite team's most painful loss. And Tyler Furness, who appears, who will be on a Let's Play every day this morning. He didn't say ninety-eight, did he? Well, he, he said for, for our team, there's five or six of them well, equally true. painful. <laughs> and and I and I came back and I wasn't like I didn't you know come at him, but I said, you know what? I've seen them all. And there was just a special kind of pain that happened in 1975 with the, with that Dallas game right. because that was a brutally hard game. And I the heard Vikings, the 70s were nice. I heard the, the 70s. Yeah. Nice. And the Vikings had that game won. <laughs> Yeah, you know you're kidding. They did. Yeah. They had that game won, and they deserved it. Carl Eller, his best individual game as a Minnesota yeah. Viking, harassing Roger Staubach from sideline to sideline, and they threw this freaking pass, and you see our guy get pushed down, 
and the, and all of a sudden something comes flying by, and and like I see Pearson with the end zone, I'm going, but they threw a flag, they threw a flag, and it was a tennis ball somebody threw from the the crowd that you saw come through. But so I kept waiting for the flag, and I'm like, no flag, and all of a sudden Dallas has got the game, and we had the ball for like a minute, you know, after that. But the Vikings were yelling at the referees; it was chaos. A referee gets hit in the head with a bottle thrown from the stands. It was embarrassing. It was ugly. Yeah, right. And there I am, 12 years old, and just like that, season's over. And I'm just like, what just happened? And you're you're like Minnesota. It's like today. It's it like set 20- you up for a lifetime of losing in Minnesota, though. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that happened at Super Bowl four. My dad watched the game. He was never a football watcher. And, and when I'm watching this thing, he's explaining the whole game to me. And I'm like, can our team be the red team? As Kansas City's <laughs> going up and down the field and the Vikings. Here we are, 50-some oh. years later, nothing has changed. No. It's all, it, it was a great precursor for you. Suck us back in. And, you know, and, and as KG, if you pointed out in this program before, the NFL never, never shuts down. And Ooh. I'm tired of people getting down on the combine and all the rest of it. Because just, if you don't like it, shut up. You don't yeah. have to do it. Watch you know it. what I mean? Right. But I'm in. I'm in for I'll all take of combine video over this Wordle stuff that I can't get off my Twitter feed. I've had enough <laughs> already. I don't know what the hell it is, but stop. Sending me Wordle scores. I don't care. Nobody cares. Yeah. If you want to play, that's cool. But nobody cares what you did. So did you see what C Willie? Did you see what C Willie did? And then I just said, "He's like, I don't get this. Like, I think it's a new de- defensive scheme. I don't know. Like, no, I have zero interest. <laughs> yeah. Zero. No idea you're, what it, what it's. You're the about. first person no, I've had heard verbalize. I'm like, is it Wordle? Is it Wordly? What is it? And I don't I, even know what it is, but right. I just want it off my Twitter feed. <laughs> and I don't want to go look at it because I know myself in games. If I start to play this stupid Correct. thing, it will be my life. It will suck so, you right in. Yeah, it's like DFS, Kev. It's like yeah, we talked different. about going this year. I'd never played DFS before. There I am last night, mining my own business. The game that they offered for free for subscribers on on uh, SuperDraft was the Rangers and the Maple Leafs. Of course. I know little to nothing about either team. I go and do all my homework. I put together, I play some, I stack some maple leaf lines. I put them together. And so people start ringing my phone. Dude, you're in first. Dude, you're at a hundred bucks and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to know this. No. So now I'm like putting on the game. My wife's like, why are we watching this game? And I'm like, maple leafs, huh? <laughs> it's DFS, you know. So now at the end of the night, I'd go from first to 14th in the third period. I win five bucks. As you would say, KG, go get yourself a nice sandwich. Yeah, right? exactly. If you're lucky. But now I feel like I lost. Okay. And I would have been happy it. with, oh, I won five that bucks. You dollars in your hands. That's, That's right. right. Well, remember no, on I, Thanksgiving, I did that. I had I texted you guys. I'm like, oh, my God. I was in first and had, like, I it. think it was $250. And my husband's like, quit now. I'm like, you can't. It's DFS. What do you mean quit now? It's not, yeah. a, it's not a slot machine. And I think I said to you at that time, it's early. Yeah, I know. Know. And then you're like, oh, this is going to be her first experience at heartbreak in this. But no. And, and I won five bucks on Thanksgiving. It's like, whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. It feels like losing. Right. I go from like, hey, I won five bucks on a game I knew nothing about. And did you just to stay with hockey for a second? Did you see who scored the Rangers first two goals last night? Ryan Reeves, fourth line goon. Uh, how would you? I mean. <laughs> How would you even come up with that? I mean, come on. He was cheap, I'm sure, but give me a break. I mean, he had on. to be like yeah. 90 to one. You know, and I didn't play him. Of course. As the sun eclipses. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. So my my I have a cousin who's a Rangers fan who lives in, in Philly, but he grew up, you know, being a, a, a Jets, Mets, Rangers guy in New Jersey. And I said, "Is it true Ryan Reeves scored two goals tonight?" And he said, <laughs> "I think it, he, he he said his birthday is tomorrow." It's the hockey gods conspiring to give him an early gift. And I said, well, judging by the career that I've watched of this guy, I would say it's more likely Satan, but go, <laughs> you go with that. You know, He's been a villain. <laughs> All right, we got football to talk about. Four games. We start on Saturday, game one, 3.30 in the afternoon, central time to kickoff. We have the Bengals of Cincinnati traveling to Nashville to take on the Titans of Tennessee. In that game, the Titans given three and a half points with an over under of 47. And thanks to my, my meteorology friend, Kevin Gord, weather does not appear to be a factor. Weather will not be a problem. And here comes Rodney Dangerfield, the team that nobody respects. You know, <laughs> all they do is win big games, beat good teams like Kansas City. Uh, and yet, Mike Vrabel and the Titans just can get nobody to talk about them. Everybody wants to talk about Josh Allen. And Buffalo, everybody's talking about Mahomes in Kansas City. Nobody's talking about Tennessee. If I'm Mike Vrabel, I'm loving this because all we do is sit back, get healthy, 
get the best running back on the planet healthy, and get to take on a rookie quarterback in his first road playoff game. So I get it. Cincinnati's the shiny new toy, and they're fun, and he smokes cigars after wins, and it's the trendy thing to do to cheer for the Bengals now. They just won their first playoff game since the early 90s. I saw footage of the last time they won a playoff game, and O.J. Simpson was doing the postgame show <laughs> on the field for NBC. Think about that for a minute, okay? So, no, I'm not taking the bait. I'm not taking Joe Burrow. I'm going right back to the well. I'm taking Vrabel. I'm taking Tennessee, and I'm laying the points, and I love this game. Guys, I love this game. Yeah, it's going to be a, a hell of a game, and uh, Derrick Henry uh, looks, looks, everything's pointing in the trajectory that he's going to play. Yep. Um, I, I worry that with such an injury that he might re-injure. And so um, that's, that's a concern. Um, but yeah, this is, this is going to be um, a phenomenal game. I, I do think that uh, the Cincinnati D um, they ought to watch that on that offensive line. We all know that. Um, uh, oh shoot. Who's was sacked 51 times this Bro. year. Who? Joe Burrow. No, 47. He's, oh yes, Burrow. Sorry. Tannehill's right below him. I'm sorry. You're right, Tim. Tannehill's right below him. And, and Tennessee is, it, I'm now on the Tennessee train. Love it. Good. Welcome. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're going to roll I'm, right through town yeah, on Saturday I'm, and catch my team. Tickets. They're my, they're my team for the Super Bowl. Um, they will in the off season have to address some of their offensive line issues, I think, but this, um, this is going to be a really good game. So uh, this game, I, I'm, Good to have Derrick Henry back. Unbelievable. The, the when we were doing this journey, every week I would say to Kevin, I would say, you know, every week I look at Tennessee and I'm like, oh my God, they got to play these guys. They played a brutal schedule, yes. and all they did was win. Every week I would think, oh, there, this is the week it catches up to them, and it never did. No, they just they are super impressive, and I we don't know the the full extent of the health of Derrick Henry, but they're not going to put him out there. I mean, he's too valuable an asset. They're not going to march him out there unless he's ready to go. And I think the time off has done everybody good in Tennessee, to your point, Timmy, off the schedule that that they had. And that'll lead me into my prop play. And, you know, the one thing you know about Derrick Henry, if he's on the field, the defense has to respect him. They've got to put seven guys, sometimes eight guys in the box. And if you look at Ryan Tannehill's numbers with Derrick Henry in the lineup, with him out of the lineup, it's dramatically different with him in the lineup. He's a different quarterback. Yeah. When he's got that guy, it makes sense because nobody behind him can fill that void and defenses don't respect the foremans of the world and all those other guys. They march out there. So no. we're going to go over one and a half for uh, Tannehill touchdown passes. We get $120 for our $100 mythically wager. So we get plus money. And I just think the way since he has to defend Derrick Henry is going to lead to some red zone throws by the quarterback. So I'm taking Tannehill up and over the total guys. Nice. Love it. Love it. Love it. So uh, my prop play uh, is Burrow over 272. Okay. This is why he's going to probably be in chase mode. Not yep. gonna, I'm, I'm, and that's I'm, not I'm, no pun intended with his top I, receiver, right? That's just, okay. <laughs> got it. I see what you're doing there. Nice. And um, I have to say that Tennessee is better uh, on the rush D than they are past D. Um, and so I, I, I just think he's got to go Back to what he knows. He has a lot of tools. And I think, you know, he only had about 244 passing yards against the Raiders. But um, it was it was a game of field goals. I mean, they had like right. four or some, I think, um, on that. He did he did uh, throw a couple of, of touchdowns. So I, I just think he's going to. He's going to have to go back to to lighten it up. And I think they're going to try and exploit the the weakness of of the Titans, which is their past D. But um, I totally think Titans are going to win. Don't get me wrong. But I think that Burrow is going to have to um, carry this team. And I think it's going to be on his arm. I like both the plays. And, and I think that um, going into his injury, we finally had a chance that somebody other than a quarterback was going to win the league MVP award. And Derrick Henry has separated himself. And, and and I I know you love you some uh, Indianapolis running back uh, John, Jonathan Taylor, you know? <laughs> but 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 we weren't talking a word about him before Derrick Henry went out, and and I think that Henry will be used judiciously this week, yes. and then heavy heavy in the AFC Championship, yep. and then potentially in the Super Bowl. There'll be nothing to save him for next week. They shouldn't need him to beat Cincinnati, but having him will enable them to open everything up because you're right. They're not great against the run to begin with. And, and how inspired is that offensive line going to be knowing that they have that 
800 pound gorilla behind him. Oh, yeah. I, I think this is going to be a, a, to the Senator's point, super intriguing game because, you know, Tennessee is, is, the, is the one seed that no one's talking about. And here's Cincinnati. Uh, they've got the weapons. I think there's going to be points scored in this game. The weather yes. dictates that. Uh, and I, I just think in the end, uh, Cincinnati's taking another step this year. And even if they get beat, let's say they get beat 31-21, something like that, they'll be a better team for it. I mean, they have to, there's a progression here that I think every team's gone through. You look at all the really good young teams in this league, winning a home playoff game is a big first step. I just don't know if they're quite ready for the next step. On the road's a different animal. And against this Tennessee team, who I, I think is really good. I think they're a terrific team. They're good enough to win the whole thing. So I think since he's a year away, and I think three and a half points is pretty manageable. So I, I do really think laying the points is the, the right way to go in this game. And I, I'm really looking forward to seeing how it plays out. The next game, uh, 7 o'clock start uh, Saturday night. And this is going to have much of the country's uh, attention. Uh, San Francisco 49ers, there's question marks up and down the lineup, how they came out of that Dallas game going into this game. <sighs> They've got the Packers at Lambeau Field. I'm watching the weather this week here just to see what's going to be in Green Bay and how bad it will or will not be. And it seems like it's going to be tolerable on on Saturday night. You know, it's not going to be 40 below. No. You know, so I'm, like I'm, I'm looking I think at that like as a, a win already yeah. for the 49ers, right? But the Packers are giving six with an over-under of 47 and a half. I think for everybody watching out there, if you're going to play this game, you should wait. And you honestly should wait till Saturday to – to punch in those tickets. If you like the sides we like. Now, if you like Green Bay, maybe you roll the dice and, and lay the six thinking the line might go up because there are some injuries that, that you mentioned, Timmy. Two key guys on defense that we don't know uh, if they're going to play. Boza is as big as it gets for Sam Fran. So as we sit here right now, I'm going to assume that these guys are going to give it a go. And, you know, we're, we're a couple days away from the game as we record this. But I, I, I like San Francisco plus the points, and I like the under. I You know, the, the game time temperature is in that 15-degree range. Uh, and I think both these teams have the type of secondary that the other quarterback is going to have to respect. We don't know what Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be. Is it going to be Trey Lance? So I like the under. I think no question San Francisco is going to be a run first team throughout this football game until they get down by more than seven. And Green Bay, as much as we talk about Rodgers and that passing game, and it's pretty solid, when they get into cold weather, they got the two-headed monster that is Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. So I, I'm going to call for a tight game and a, and a running game where both teams are going to move the ball, both teams are going to move the clock. So I'm going to play Sam Fran and the under. And if I can keep this thing low scoring for three quarters, we'll see what the Niners have in the fourth quarter. But they've been showing me something, guys. They've been playing desperate football for a month. That comeback two weeks ago against the Rams, I think, set them up for success like they had last week in Dallas. And some teams just get on a roll this time of year, and I like to ride the wave. I'm going to ride the Niners. Uh, yeah, I, I just can't <clears throat> su support the Packers winning this. It's just, <laughs> uh, I will say this. I found a nugget KG. Oh, <clears throat> Rogers zero and three against 49ers. Ooh. And he's a so, no Northern California guy. So maybe is. there's something to that. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, he's methodical. We know Rogers is methodical. Only four interceptions this year. Um, been sacked 30 times, which. That we obviously have already established there's worse quarterbacks a game before yeah. them. <laughs> Both have been sacked way more, but um, I don't know. I mean, 49ers only allowed 77 rushing yards on um, from the Cowboys last week. So, uh, but th their running backs are nothing like Jones and Dylan. So, yeah, um, I don't do I do my prop play or now? Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Both yeah. you guys I have think, prop uh, plays coming. I'd up, love so to hear your prop play. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, I'm I'm going to go with the guy who has kept me <laughs> in all my, fan, my, my, my league long fantasies and everything is in every daily fantasy thing for me. And that's Debo Sam. He's going to get a touchdown. Um, I just, I, I just think that um, they, you just can't stop him. And, and the, he's, whether you're running, whether you're passing, it doesn't matter. This guy finds a way to score. Yeah. And I think um, they're going to be looking at Kittle. They're going to be looking at Mitchell and um, just all these weapons coming at the Packers. Um, I I just think Debo is going to outplay him and he's going to get a, a touchdown. Yeah, he's quite the player, no doubt about it. I think he's also going to be uh, a player that Green Bay isolates on, which might, might open some things up 
in the middle of the line uh, for yep. a guy named Elijah Mitchell. I, I'm super impressed yep. with this young running back. Anytime yep. touchdowns plus 150, so I'm getting time and a half on my cash. And in a game where I think San Francisco really wants to establish that they can run the football, especially in the red zone, uh, I'll go for a Mitchell uh, touchdown at plus 150 and hope that San Fran can hang. I, I, I am worried as I sit here a couple days out that uh, if those guys on the defense and Garoppolo all – have the type of injury that's not going to allow them to be successful in this game, Green Bay could run away. So there's a way I could get completely smoked. I mean, all these things tie together, right? I mean, under, Niners, running back touchdown. I'm, I'm looking for a, you know, a 23 to 20 type of game. The over-under is only 47 and a half, so not a lot of points. So, yeah, this should be an entertaining game. We're all cheering for San Fran. We can all agree with that. Yeah, I think um, one thing just about Garoppolo um, – and it's just every game you watch him. I mean, he tries like he's such a he's good. He's a baller. He's good. He's but not great. Just, he's not great. He's and good. He sits That's there a good, and, good way of putting he, it. Yeah, like I mean, he'll get you. He, you know, he may get you. Um, you build a team around him, right? I mean, there's there's other quarterbacks out there you don't want to build a team around, and you have he's other a lot like Cousins for me. He's good, yeah. but he's not great. He tries if to lose the, the right game in the end. Him, he, yeah, and your he, right weapons. He can get you where you need to go. Yeah, but he's not going to take a team on his back and carry him. He's a lot oh. like Kirk Cousins, and and I'm not ripping on Cousins. There's nothing yeah. wrong with Kirk Cousins. You're going to find out. I think a lot of Vikings fans are going to find out if the Vikings move on from him, it can get a lot worse. So, but, um, but Garoppolo just, is somebody. Coded. Garoppolo is somebody that the organization they're going to have a discussion about him. They have to. They just have to in the off season. Well, when you draft and, Trey Lance the way they did right. and 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 move up to do it. At some point, yeah. they've got to hand the ball to this kid. They can't yeah. just let him wait there. They way too much equity on Trey Lance. And exactly. he might get the chance to play here. So they might get even a better window into their future uh, this weekend. So we'll see. So I, I just think Garoppolo might be a discussion on this quarterback carousel. And oh. um, and I just think there there is a chance that discussions could happen with the Vikings. And, oh, and for him. sure. I, I, and, and I think that um, I just hope we see a little bit better out, out of them. I mean, they should have sealed that deal in that game last week and it's just that interception was embarrassing yeah way embarrassing and way too got way too close when it never should have been in the end correct and and now there is discussion about having having a sprained shoulder have you guys heard i have never heard footage the distinction was good. which shoulder is it they had they footage on yeah that's right i don't know yep. which one it is so so does this mean trey lance is, is an option so just i have and i know we we all want San Fran to win, but I have just this tremendous fear of the Packers winning, even playing in another Super Bowl. I have to hear about them for weeks, you know, leading into the whole thing. I just don't want it. Um, no. So I'm like looking for reasons why they might lose. And is it uh, Hakeem or, or Raheem Mostert? Who is the, Raheem the, Mostert? Yeah, Raheem he's Mostert. the guy who went nuts on him a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, San Francisco goes to some, he rushes for 190 some yards and multiple well, touchdowns. No. And, and yeah, well, and, and so he's not Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell is a better back, and, and and I would say with a better offensive line, I'd say the Packers are probably a better defense. So, but there's that. So That's I think that San, San Francisco will go heavy run. They want to keep their exposure to Aaron Rodgers as limited as possible. They want to keep possession of the ball. And does Trey Lance and his ability to run, a la Colin Kaepernick, who also scorched the Packers as the running quarterback, does he play a role in that? Mm. Do they have a wildcat design for him? Do they have a plan to go with him if Garoppolo is? being Jimmy G. And I would say different than Cousins in the sense that I think Cousins, a la Jim Suhan, is a better thrower of the football than Jimmy Garoppolo is. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is a better quarterback than, than he can move Cousins around more. Is. Yeah, no doubt. And he's gutsier, you know, and he's, he's a guy I think players would probably want to play with more than, than, a, than a Kirk Cousins, more, more of the guys. They're both in that 12 to 16 range in the league. You know, you think about the league, 30 plus yeah. teams, you know, they're, they're kind of in the upper echelon, but they're not elite. And so you know, I'll, I'll just warn Viking fans out there that you can rip on cousins all you want, but I, I saw a lot out there in this league. That's a lot worse than what we had here. <laughs> the Vikings problems go a hell of a lot deeper than Kirk cousins. I'll, Correct. I'll promise you that. Correct. It all depends on what are other teams interested in? What can you get for them? What Correct. can you get back, and how do you fill that void? Baker so, Mayfield's not the answer. If they play that card, I think it's going to be a long year again next year. No disrespect But it, but it would only be one year. That's fine. That's fine. It's going to be an ugly year because watching Odell Beckham <laughs> – no, I mean, look at Beckham. You know, honestly, I, 
if you I wanted know. to find out where the dysfunction was, and, and Beckham was a ghost in Cleveland. I had him on my right. fantasy roster, forced to drop him because he did nothing. Yep. And he and he goes out to LA and he's he's just like he used to be. He's really good. It's like, I don't know. Uh, the Cleveland thing to me is a mess. I wouldn't touch any of that, but we'll mm-hmm. see. It depends what I could get. If it gets me in the conversation for a first round quarterback in next year's draft, if I have a shot at either quarterback from Ohio State or Alabama, if I can get the draft capital to get there. I mean, That's key. That's a big if, though. That's a big it's if. a huge if. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge if. But you can't say McNiff without if. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well played. So there you go. So we got the, uh, the Sunday in the afternoon game. Uh, the, the Rams uh, playing at the, the Bucks. Tampa Bay given three with an over under of 48 and a half. And man, all I've seen this week, everyone seems to be thinking that the Rams are winning this game. I don't get it. I, I, I'm seeing the same thing. The line hasn't moved. I'm like, wait a minute here, folks. What are we doing here? I mean, the Rams before last week were looked upon as a team that was going in the wrong direction, that wasn't playing good football with a quarterback who never had won in the playoffs. They win one game against a horrible, I mean, horrible Arizona team that has done this year after year. And now all of a sudden, here come the Rams. No, don't, don't do this to yourselves. Of all the games this week, this is my strongest opinion. I don't care what the number is. Right now it's only three, and I am going to lock in early. I recommend you do the same. Take the bucks here and don't even think about it. I mean, this this is this is the goat against a guy that listen, Stafford's good. Yep. He's not Tom Brady. The Rams are good. They're not Tampa Bay. And I know they're missing Godwin and they're missing some pieces. I don't care. All right. They're gonna find a way to win. They're at home. They're gonna fire the cannons and they're gonna be able to score points on this Rams defense. Tom Brady knows how to move the football against this defense. Yep. There are gonna be adjustments made. They've had time to get ready for this one. I'm all over it. I mean, they, they were on cruise control last week. It was like a bye week. Tampa and the over. I'm doubling down on the Bucs here. I, I love this game. And I think that the Bucs are going to smoke them. Yep. If you don't able disagree. to incorporate two I new running backs. I do not in- disagree. I think, I, I think it's – I don't think there's anything more I could add to that. I think it's – they just the Rams' defense – uh, dominated a depleted Arizona team that has been so inconsistent um, and, uh, this this year. Uh, other than the beginning part, the second half, I'll clarify. Second half, yeah. they've been very inconsistent. Obviously, they were the undefeated longest six weeks. Didn't they go like six weeks? Yeah, they look um, good, but this is a different level. Yep, and, this is uh, a different level. And it's, and it's against Tom Brady and a team that just follows him. He's just like, let me, let me help you here. I'm going to do this. I got this. Um, and so I agree. I think it's Bucks. I, I don't understand why everybody's talking about the Rams. How is Ryan Jensen? How is Tristan Wirfs? I'm, I'm interested to know all that, but the, the Tampa will do whatever they have to do. Brady got pressured a lot by Philadelphia, got sacked a lot by Philadelphia. I get it. But uh, I think Fournette is back this week. I haven't heard that officially, but if he was a game time decision last week and they didn't have to play him, he's had a whole nother week to recover. Mm-hmm. They've worked in Gio Bernard, who's good catching the ball yeah. in the backfield. They've got another guy that Jody can run the ball. So I think that the GOAT finds a way to get it done. And uh, that factors into one of your prop plays. Yeah, I like the over. Uh, passing <clears throat> yards are 285 and a half. I think this is going to be a throwing game. Yep. I think against that front that the Rams possess, once in a while you can go to the well running the ball, but when push comes to shove and Tampa wants to move the ball, they're going to throw it. And I think Gronk is set up for a big game. I think Evans is going to be doubled. I think Evans is the tricky one for me, but there are other receivers that can make plays in this game. Uh, I think of Scotty Miller. I think of Ty Johnson. I think of some of those bit players that kind of you forget about because Godwin and some of those regulars, when they're in there, are just so dominating. They're, they're going to find a way. And if Fournette plays, he's going to catch a lot of footballs out of the backfield. I, I think the Rams are in for a long Sunday afternoon, guys. I agree, and I think the Rams are going to be playing um, catch up and chasing again. Uh, and so I think uh, I think Cooper Cup is going to be obviously a target. So I think he will get a touchdown, but mm-hmm. um, he's going. They're going to be chase mode the whole time. And yep. these two love to throw the ball. Love. Yeah, it. I like that play a lot actually because it's hard to run in the red zone on Tampa. They yep. have a, a really good red zone run defense. Yep. Cooper Cup is going to get. I love that play because I they are going to be chasing the game. Yeah, they have to throw. I mean, mm-hmm. you you got me onto that early this year. Tampa just says you will not run, and that defense from Tampa last week looked like the playoff defense from a year ago. It was you could see that they had turned it up. Guys were healthy, and the way they were pursuing to the ball. So I I know why everyone got excited about the Rams too, but I just don't see how they're going to be able to score a ton of points against that defense. I just don't see it. It sure feels like it's going to be Tampa and Green Bay all over again. I know I picked the Niners plus the six, so there's a way they can cover and lose. But it, 
it, it sure feels like we're setting it all up again for Brady and Rodgers. And, and I'm okay with it, to be honest. I, I really am because uh, Green Bay has proven time and time again when they get in that type of situation that they underachieve. But, you know, I, and I love to see the Niners beat them. Uh, but if we're being realistic here, it just feels like it is deja vu all over again, as Yogi Berra once adroitly stated. And I have no problem cheering for Tom Brady over Aaron Rodgers. Not a problem. You and, you and me both. Everybody. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, one more game, and it's the biggie. Yep. The Bills coming up that absolute dismantling of the New England Patriots, oh. taking on the uh, KC Chiefs, who did what everyone expected and more against the Pittsburgh Steelers. KC giving two with an over-under of 54 and a half, and this one is the biggie on Sunday night. I can watch one game all week, any sport at any time. This is the one game I want to be locked in on. I can't wait for this game. Um, we got a taste of this last year in, in the uh, AFC Championship game, and I kind of look at that as another step along the way for, for Josh Allen and Buffalo. You had the game a couple years ago in Houston where Josh Allen blew a double-digit lead and turned the ball over three times in the second half and looked like he was lost. Then you saw the progression. Won a home game last year, progressed all the way to the AFC Championship, got into this game, had a 9 nothing lead, and then the offense kind of sputtered. Here come the Chiefs who had been there and done that. They took care of business. Another step along the way, Josh Allen and Buffalo look like a team on a mission. It wasn't the fact that they beat New England, who's not as good as Kansas City right now. It's the way they did it. I was so impressed, and I'm, I'm going to ride the wave. I think this is a team that will win a Super Bowl. I think Josh Allen is the best quarterback in football right now for my money, and he'll prove it again this weekend. Now, this guy is a stud, and I love the way this game is setting up. The, I think the number in Vegas tells the story, guys, because there is not a more public team in the sports book right now than Mahomes and Kansas City, and this number opened it to, and it has not moved. They are begging for the average Joe and every book – in the country to bet on Kansas City because the sharp money will come in on Buffalo. Josh Allen over Patrick Mahomes. I said it. I'm doing it. I'm taking the two. Yes, please. Ah, that's, that's what coming I said. next. Don't that, that, hold okay. on. We're, get, okay. we're gonna get to the yes, please part, part of the uh, the play. But I, 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 my heart and my head are in unison on this one. And I love Andy Reid and Mahomes. I got nothing against those guys. They're not the Packers. But I think it's time for Josh Allen and Buffalo to rise up. This is their time to have a kick at the can to go to the Super Bowl, and I think they get it done. So uh, I think Buffalo is also the best defense in the league, period, and they're playing mm -hmm. like it. Um, and so I'm going to say this. Uh, it's going to be – and then I'll wait for you to do your prop play because my next comments have a little bit to do with my prop play. I think this game is going to be about the who makes the fewest interceptions or has the fewest drop passes. Like, it's going to be about who is the more meticulous, disciplined quarterback in this game. Um, because I think both teams have the ability um, to be explosive, but um, I think it's going to just be who's, who's just the more concise, accurate, um, who can have the more completions. So... I mean, it's. I, I think that's what it's gonna. I think that's what it's gonna come down to because I think it's gonna be a close game. Um, Chiefs at oh, yeah. home. So. All right. So uh, KG, your prop play. Well, this one is. I've been waiting for an opportunity like this, and maybe I'll end up with egg on my face, and we'll recap the stuff on Monday, and we can all laugh. But did some research. Dawson Knox, as we know, uh, a tight end that kind of flies under the radar, scored two touchdowns last week, and that was awesome. When these teams met earlier in the regular season this year, Dawson Knox scored two TDs against Kansas City. Now we go back to that playoff game last year in very cold weather in Kansas City at Arrowhead. Dawson Knox scored the touchdown to put Buffalo up nine to nothing. Here we come again. Dawson Knox is plus 220 on an anytime touchdown. Yes, 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 please, please. $100 wager gets you back $320. I beg you, if you're going to do anything all weekend long and you're going to dabble, dabble with Dawson. We're going Dawson Knox in the end zone, guys. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I love it. He was a stud last week. So <clears throat> the one prop play I didn't get last week. Oh, here Diggs. we go. Here, Six you love your Diggs. yard, Stefan Diggs. Come on, man. You love him. You love him. So I'm going back. Oh, you hear no. me, Stefan Diggs? I'm oh, going no. back to you. Uh -oh. Plus 70, and I'm going to tell you why. Last week, Allen threw 308 yards, five touchdowns, but only 25 pass attempts. So he's going back 
to what he knows best. And that is more like 50 attempts. Oh boy. And I like, <laughs> and I like digs over 70.5. And uh, again, I think it's going to come down to uh, who is the more disciplined, more accurate and who can, who can get the completions. Fewest turnovers will determine this game. That's just what I think. And I'm going to give Diggs one more try. You hear me step on Diggs 71 yards. That's all I'm asking oh, for. That's you, all buddy. you're asking for. You need one big play, and I think he'll get yep. there. Because you know you know, in the middle of the game, he's going to have those five or six catches yep. for you know around 50 yards. He needs one big play in this game, and I think you're going to get home. Yes. It, Kansas City's been an interesting team all year. Uh, their defense is great. Their defense sucks. Their defense is great. <laughs> their defense sucks. You know, it's just been it's just odd. What I'm saying. And they, they seem to have them figured out. But then last week I'm watching that game, and it was just Pittsburgh, and maybe they're not that good. But man, they just seem like they had speed at all the different positions. And all of a sudden, it, it, and I, you find me one publication that talked about Jarrett McKinnon, Jarrett McKinnon before that game last I week. I had no idea. I got no. all in on Darrell Williams. I did he, not see that one yep. coming. Yes, and I all of a sudden I'm seeing Jet McKinnon getting eight yards a pop and everything, and I'm like, man, they just added speed to their team in two aspects, running the ball and catching the ball. He's not a full-year guy, but he's their their offense just became more diverse again. So I, I don't have a strong play in this one, you guys. I'll be the guy with the popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy watching that game. What happens. Didn't Williams, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Williams fumble like right away or drop something or didn't, because he only got like four yards the whole game. I think something happened and maybe Reed just pulled him quick. I don't know. Like, I'm not going to put up with that. We got to, he was, I don't know. He was a little banged up going into the game. I don't yeah. think oh, he was a hundred percent. And that's why all of a sudden, but I did not, I mean, I looked at I have too many people's stuff in DFS right. going into that game. Yeah. And I'm like, just sitting by myself. I can't say this is my wife. The poor woman. And I'm like, what the, where did Jet <laughs> McKinnon come from? <laughs> Nobody said a word about him. He and there he was, breaker. not the locals. I'm like, I want to see who's got him in their DFS lineup because who, whoever had that play won. Right. Yeah, no yeah. Doubt. So, so it's a new weapon that can, and, and I guess the quarterbacks, I love everything about Josh Allen too, but, but man, Mozart was painting again last week. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, if you he give was, him an opportunity. But let's not forget, that's the same Pittsburgh team that let the Vikings march up and down the field. I mean, I, this is a yeah. little different defense here. Yes. Um, Mahomes is special. I love the kid. He he and Kaprizov are the two guys, you know, I compare them all the time because they just look like they're happiest when they're at work at the, at the rink or at the football stadium. I mean, Mahomes has a smile on his face. He's giddy. He loves to do what he does. And I have so much respect for him. And then I love Andy Reid. So this is not a play against Kansas City as right. much as it's a play on Buffalo. I believe in Josh Allen. I believe in Sean McDermott. I believe in the Buffalo Bills. They look like a team on the come. I, they got two really tough games ahead of them, likely at Kansas City. And then at Tennessee is, is just a gauntlet of a of a path to get there. But my God, they just look like a team last week that's on a mission. Seven possessions, seven touchdowns against a quality defense. I'm sorry, New England is a top five defense in this league and bill yep. belichick you can say what you want to say it's one of the greatest coaches in the history of the national football league and josh allen went out there and toyed with that team last week that tells me something that they are ready for the next step they weren't ready last year they got beaten kansas city fair and square kc was the better team last year they went in there this year and looked like a different team in the regular season i think they validate that this sunday i think they're going to the afc championship and great well, I love all of it, but man, go 49ers. That's, that's yeah, the one thing I'll be yeah. fixated on that one. All right, Melt you guys. The cheese. Yeah, thank you very much. That'll do it for this one. KG and I are going to come back on Monday and we're going to, to wrap this up. We'll take an early distant look at the uh, two championship games. Uh, but other than that, stay warm. Thank mm -hmm. you for your participation. And just for you guys watching, as you saw this, and I usually make a bigger deal about this in front, and I didn't, and KG kind of pointed this out. We are recording this. We're recording this on Thursday morning. If you're watching this with its initial posting, it's Friday or perhaps even Saturday. So listen to what KG said and, and about the, some of the lines and injury reports. We may not have the latest information. So proceed with that. We good? Sounds great, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. You guys Enjoy are the absolute football. best. we got the Rookie of the Year and, of course, the man, the myth, the legend, Kevin Gorg, a.k.a. Gorgomatic. You know what, folks? It may not be automatic, but it will.